It's Ken Harbaugh with Against All Enemies on the Midas Touch Network. Donald Trump just spoke at the Turning Point USA conference in Michigan. This youth-centered conservative group used to be on the periphery of Republican politics. Now, increasingly, the Trump campaign is depending on the enthusiasm of its members. Does that mean it's moderated its extremist positions? Not in the least. In fact, it's become even more emboldened. I spoke with Mike Breen about this. Most of you know him, former Army Intel, who later led a human rights organization that tracked hate groups. First, check out this clip from that Turning Point USA conference. So Mike Brain, you're a former Army Intel officer. You led a human rights organization where you tracked hate speech, you tracked hate groups. Is there anything innocuous at all? Anything fun and innocent about this notion of a of a white boy summer? Well, Ken, it's always good to see you. One of these days we're gonna talk about something that isn't is nuts. Um, <laughs> no, of course not. Of course not. I mean, you know, white boy summer is uh you know, it sounds pretty bad, and it's and it's it's meant worse than it sounds. Um, yeah. You know, it's a white supremacist thing. It's a dog whistle, like a lot of these things are. Uh, you know, and it's intended to say, look, this is our time. This, this is the time of white men, right? Um, which is not a great thing for any of us, including you know those of us who are white men who happen to believe that the living in a society that celebrates everybody. Uh, and where all of our neighbors belong, it's a good thing, um, as I do, and I, as I, I know you do. So, no, it's, it's very much, a, you know, one of these alt right, far right, white supremacist, talk, you know, dog whistles that seem to change every few months. Um, like a lot of them, it's kind of engineered to force people like me and guys like you to come out and explain to everybody how offensive it is, which is also designed to make us look like we're, you know, always triggered. Um, but, you know, like the, like the, the Hawaiian shirts of the Volgaloo boys who want to trigger an apocalypse and like to shoot cops, you know, there's nothing innocent about it. It's, it's an attempt at humor. This one's not even that thinly veiled really at all. Yeah. I mean, it is interesting that these groups have an entire etymology unto themselves. You really have to dig deep to understand the origins of these things. And it's left to to people like us to explain how hateful these expressions are. It's a little easier with something like white boy summer, but unless you're read in to the, to the coding and the dog whistles, most of it gets right by the majority of the media because it is directed at the, the folks who have the, the, the sensitivity to pick up the whistle. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And it's, it's a little bit, similar to, you know, the kind of subculture stuff you get with, you know, mostly guys, mostly younger, stereotypically living in their mom's basements, who spend way too much time online going super deep on Lord of the Rings or Star Wars or anime or whatever and fighting about all kinds of detailed stuff about these fictional worlds. Um, this is a little bit like that kind of Gamergate culture, except the course you know, it's a lot less harmless than that. Um, and it's intended to kind of have a, a, a wink and nod thing and you only really get it if you get it and all that stuff. Uh, it's an in-group, out-group signifier. Well, it doesn't take much more in this case than an image search of white boy summer uh, to see just how hateful the intent is. Uh, here's honestly page one, Hitler with his summer shades on You've got a, a whole catalog of hateful images, hateful memes tied to to white boy summer. And you know, it's it's like you said, it's an in-group, out group signifier. It's it's designed as a motivator for these these folks who are read in to the group. The thing that's most disturbing though is that this increasingly takes place 
at conferences like Turning Point USA, which is an official partner of the Trump 2024 campaign. He had nothing to say in terms of disavowing this kind of uh, this kind of hateful rhetoric when he just spoke there. Let me play a quick clip from him at Turning Point USA. Thank you very much. Hello, Turning Point, and hello. Hardworking American patriots, thank you very much. What a turnout this is. This guy, Charlie Kirk. I want to thank you all. And I want to thank Charlie Kirk for everything he's done at Turning Point Action for making this event possible. What a great turnout. Thanks for watching everyone. Between now and the election, I'm gonna highlight a handful of critical pro-democracy efforts that I want you to know about. The first of these is Veterans for Responsible Leadership, or VFRL. It's an organization on the front lines of the battle to protect our democratic safeguards and to hold accountable those who would dismantle them. VFRL's number one priority between now and November is preventing Donald Trump from being reelected. As an organization led by veterans, VFRL is bringing to bear all that experience and credibility to persuade other veterans and military family members that a vote for Donald Trump is a vote that undermines the very constitution that those in the military swore to uphold. Here's where VFRL needs your help. If you are a veteran or a family member of one, and if you're looking for ways to make meaningful contributions between now and November, go to VFRL.org. The team there is working on a number of critical initiatives that will make a difference in the coming presidential election. But they need more veteran voices and more volunteers. If you're up for it, go to VFRL.org and sign up. I'll have more updates in the coming months on what they have planned, but trust me, it'll be worth your time. Thanks. This episode of Burn the Boats is brought to you by Manukoro Honey. This miracle of nature just fell into my lap at the perfect time. It's a rare super honey that is 100% natural and has some unique properties. Manukoro makes Manuka honey, a single origin honey that comes from New Zealand where the bees only feed on the nectar of the Manuka tea tree, making honey that is pure, rich, complex, with a creamier texture that is on a completely different level from the normal honey you find at the supermarket. You can use it as you would any other honey, but what puts the super in Manica honey is it's rich in oxidants and prebiotics, three times more compared to regular honey. On top of that, it contains an antibacterial compound called MGO that can be found exclusively in Manuka honey. The bottom line is that these nutrients support your optimal immune and digestive health and it's delicious. Manukora sent me a jar and squeeze bottle of their MGO 850 Plus Manuka honey, their best selling honey. The 850 Plus honey has a creamy caramel texture that is unlike anything I've ever tried. Just grab a spoonful out of the jar and I put it in my favorite beverage or I squeeze some out on toast or oatmeal. It's delicious. Manukora is savory, delicious, and truly the best honey I've had. If you head to manukora.com slash boats, you can get $25 off their starter kit, which comes with the MGO 850 Plus Manuka Honey, a free travel pack of honey sticks, a free wooden spoon, and also a free guidebook. It's the perfect gift for a loved one, no matter the season. I love the jar and squeeze bottle, but the extra pack of compostable honey sticks is perfect for whenever you're on the go. You can bring them with you when you're traveling or need a quick snack running errands, and they are the perfect energy boost if you're out for a run or at the gym, especially this time of year. That's M-A-N-U-K-O-R-A dot com slash boats to get $25 off your starter kit. This is just the ultimate honey. Indulge and try some honey with superpowers from Manukora. Mike, that's the problem. I mean, there are, there are always hate groups and there always will be hate groups in the United States. But when they have this tight of an alliance with a major political party, you have to go back a ways. You probably have to go back to the, you know, the 30s and 40s to find something this dangerous. That is exactly right, Ken. I mean, when when a hate group is able to make these kinds of inroads into a major political party, and when national politicians, including a former and would be, you know, next president of the United States, legitimize them and count them as part of their loyal base 
we've always had this in American life, as you say, but that kind of thing takes us back to the to the worst days of the of the Ku Klux Klan and, and, and groups like that, where you had a very thin separation between essentially white supremacist, you know, terrorism and official elected office and and the power of government, right? Especially in the South, uh, that's not a situation you want to see anybody going back to. Um, and that's a situation that I think we face until and unless the Republican Party is able to finally decide to return to a place uh, where it has, I mean, at a minimum, it's a strange thing to say, but, you know, where, the, where Republicans, including people like the Speaker in the House, um, can speak better at the Department of Justice, the FBI, the intelligence community than they can of you know, violent white supremacist groups. Right. I mean, if you're nicer to the Proud Boys than you are to the FBI, you've kind of lost your way. And the Republican Party's been there for a long time now. What is our responsibility, ours as communicators in this space, the the activist community, our audience in calling this out? Because sometimes it feels like we're just drowning in... Uh, in this wave of of the dog whistles and the the imagery, um, and it, it almost feels impossible to call it out every time. But is there a threshold? Is it the Sonnenrad in a Ron DeSantis video, Nazi imagery in a Ron DeSantis video? Is it you know Pepe memes? Um, what? How do, how do we react to this? As someone who has spent years studying hate groups and the the language and strategies that hate groups employ, how do we respond? That's a tricky one. Um, I, I think in some ways, you know, there are principles that govern this, right? And, and one of the most important things to do is to try to avoid whatever we can sort of repeating their talking points, which is tempting to do because, you know, we, we in some ways you and I just did that to explain them and we have to. But there's a, there's a fine line between amplifying what they're doing and shining a light on it. I think we've always got to be aware of that. Um, in some ways, less so now that they've captured major media outlets and a, a presidential candidate and a major political party, but hate groups and extremist groups of all kinds have always kind of counted on the rest of us to amplify their message. That's why they do such shocking and extreme things. Um, that's why so much of their violence even is theatrics, is because they're you know, they're only going to matter to the extent that the rest of us pay attention to them and, and, and get our neighbors to do that. So that's a big deal, but at the same time, you can't ignore it and you can't just walk by it. Um, what this movement's trying to do in a lot of ways, I think, Ken, is, is camouflage itself as normal conservative American political movement, which it's not. And to the greatest extent we can point that out, you know, I, I think we might make a difference. And the last thing I'll say about this, I guess, is that we talk a lot about the tipping point, you know, what's it gonna take, what's it gonna take? I don't think there is one except at the individual level. Hmm. Except, yeah. you know, at some point, we've, we've all got to walk into a voting booth alone in November and decide what we think is right for our country and our families and our kids. Yeah. And in that moment, I think it does matter what's been set up to this point to each and every one of us. And I still believe that most people who walk into that voting booth are going to try to do the right thing. And they're going to try to do it for the right reasons. It's our job to help them figure out what that right thing is. Mike, I think that is a 100% right. And it brings to mind this ad from our partners at the Lincoln Project. And I want to end on this note because it drives that message home to those voters come November who are going to have to decide in the ballot box whether they follow their conscience or they follow those those baser instincts that Trump is appealing to. And I, like you, believe that America's gonna do the right thing in November. Thanks, Mike, always good to have you. Thank you, Ken, it's always good. What will you tell your kids? That you voted for a felon and a criminal, supported a man found guilty by a citizen jury, went into the voting booth happy to pull the lever for the only former president in history to bear the mark of criminal shame. Will you tell them that breaking the law is how they should live their lives? 
that lying to their families about porn stars and hush money is how they should behave. Do you want your son to treat women like a man who was found to have committed sexual assault? Do you want your daughter to be a victim of a man like him? You're going up the escalator? Yeah. I'm going to be dating her in 10 years. Yeah. Hey, when you're a star, they let you do it. You can do anything. Whatever you want. Grab him by the Will you tell them that he was honest? That he was a good man? Very fine people on both sides. That he treated people the way you've taught them? I'd like to punch him in the face, I'll tell you. Will you tell them you're proud of his cruelty? Happy with the ugly insults. I mean, I'd look her right in that fat, ugly face of hers. The attacks on women and the endless lies that the chaos, death, and danger he brought was worth it. We know it's hard to walk away and put country over party, but your kids are watching. You're not just voting for your future, you're voting for theirs. Love this video? Make sure you stay up to date on the latest breaking news and all things Midas by signing up to the Midas Touch newsletter at MidasTouch.com newsletter.